print money out of thin air. You're poor. There it is. The all-seeing eye. The Federal Reserve, the eight families of the Federal Reserve, is the Illuminati. And it is, I told you, back in 1913, that is when we were enslaved to the Illuminati. This is when they controlled our country. Okay? They control this note, the circulating supply of this note. And then they'll say, oh, the, the Federal Reserve can't tell you what to do with your notes. That's true. Per se. Per se. It's, it's not as scarce. And the more money, the more notes that the Federal Reserve prints, the less purchasing power your dollar that's in your pocket has. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Eddie, Brrr, a.k.a. Durio 1000. Brrr. Hopefully, you're having a great day. Today is February the 4th, 2024, here in Orlando, watching the Pro Bowl here in Orlando. So, right now, I want to take a moment out to talk about voting and Donald Trump and Joe Biden and who really runs this country okay Back to the United States and that was all I mean that was fairly good but also in the grand scheme of thing there, there wasn't much change right so I realized that all of these presidents are nothing more than spokesmen for the Illuminati, the deep state, the Federal Reserve, a.k.a. the eight families of the Federal Reserve. That is who rules this country. And before I get into that, The representatives, the presidents, Bush, Biden, Trump, they really don't have that much power. They have a lot of perceived power, but they don't really have that much power. The true power holders, there are only two true power holders in the United States. One is the Federal Reserve. The eight families of the Federal Reserve, to be more specific, the Federal Reserve Act of 1913, which basically enslaved every American and gave up all of our power to the bankers, which our forefathers, our founding fathers, wanted to prevent this from happening. And so the two powers are the eight families of the Federal Reserve, and the power of the people. Now, we can only be slaves, enslaved, if we agree to that. Once, if we all stand up and abolish the Federal Reserve Act of 1913, then we will be free. We will see a beautiful America then. But until that point, we will be enslaved by the eight families of the Federal Reserve. Now, let's take a look at the United States laws so you all won't think I'm blowing hot air. And I'll, I'll include a link in the, in the description. So, go to uscode.house.gov and browse, and you'll see the Federal Reserve System, okay? Now, the Federal Reserve Act was established in 1913, okay? The Act of December 23rd, 1913, all right? And here's a... Once you click down here, the Federal Reserve Act, 
it'll pull up a window and once you pull up this window you can click on this act here and it'll give you this a snippet of the act all right and it gives all of the rules and the power of the the eight families of the Federal Reserve all right now the Federal Reserve is people ask where does money come from people think that it comes from the United States but it actually comes from the eight families of the Federal Reserve and the Secretary of the Treasury basically works for the Federal Reserve by printing money or Federal Reserve notes for the Federal Reserve banks okay so that is how money is created and that is how the Federal Reserve rules our country because of this act the Federal Reserve Act of 1913 December 22nd 1913 now, this is just chapter five okay but there are other chapters that are not listed here okay but this goes into the details of how the Federal Reserve works and the laws that it has now one of the things that you will notice while you go through one of the things you'll notice while you go through the Federal Reserve Act in laws is that there is no limit as to how much money they can print there's no limit on who the banks or the eight families of the Federal Reserve can send money to or use money for all right so there's that and the Federal Reserve let me show you all you all a building here it is from a helicopter view here it is up close let me make sure here it is up close and this was completed in 1937 now one of the things about the Federal Reserve building and, and the Federal Reserve in general they don't build anything okay they don't build any cars no boats no houses nothing yet they own everything and control this country through inflation also known as taxation also known as theft also known as stealing the purchasing power of the dollars that you have in your pocket now I said that this video was hopefully going to be under 20 minutes but this is a video I'm sorry this is a picture of the Federal Reserve Building in Washington DC let me show you a picture of the White House so this is the White House all right Federal Reserve Building White House Federal Reserve Building White House okay this is who this is the building where we think the decisions are made but the decisions aren't made here the decisions are made here this is who rules this country because the people that work here work for notes Federal Reserve notes or US dollars from here so this place controls the currency of the United States while this place pretends to control the country of the United States but this place does not control the country of the United States because DC they work for US dollars which are controlled by the Federal Reserve aka the eight families of the Federal Reserve okay this is who rules this country this is who we are enslaved to this is who we did not vote for yet Congress voted for them 
Democrats voted for them in 1913. And this, who are the slave masters, are your slave masters and are my slave masters? Because we work and die and kill for the Federal Reserve notes, which are controlled by the eight families of the Federal Reserve. Not by the White House. Okay. Now. Let's talk about the notes. The U.S. dollar. This is proof that the eight families of the Federal Reserve are the Illuminati. See, at the top of this says Federal Reserve Note. Okay? Federal Reserve Note. This means that it's a note from the Federal Reserve. Now, before this note, this cash, was backed by gold, silver. Okay, you would be able to redeem this dollar or ten dollars or one hundred dollars or five hundred dollars for a certain certain amount of gold, but not anymore. Take a look at this, and I'm going to show you the Illuminati. Anybody spot the Illuminati? All the CNI? Anybody see it? Anybody see this on the Federal Reserve note? Anybody see it on the Federal Reserve note? There it is. There it is. There it is. The all-seeing eye. The all-seeing eye. The Federal Reserve. Eye. The eight the families Federal of the Reserve, Federal Reserve. The eight families of the Federal Reserve. Is the Illuminati. Is the Illuminati. And it is... I told you, back in 1913, that is when we were enslaved to the Illuminati. This is when they controlled our country, okay? They control this note, the circulating supply of this note. And then they'll say, oh, the, the Federal Reserve can't tell you what to do with your notes. That's true, per se, per se. I can send this note to whoever to whoever I want to. Go buy a piece of candy bar. Go pay taxes with it. Go to a show with it to with this note. However, they control the supply of this note. The more that they print, and being that they may be going to well, it's already digital. They really don't even need to print these notes anymore. <clears throat> Everything's digital, right? You have your bank account, which has digits that represent these notes, right? Federal Reserve doesn't even need to print the notes anymore. But people still want cash, right? They say cash is king. Federal, the eight families of the Federal Reserve is king. Okay? So... How do they control the money that's in your pocket? Well, it's simple. They control the money that's in your pocket. They're not stealing it physically. What they are doing when they print more is they are stealing the purchasing power of this dollar through inflation. What does that mean? That means that if, hypothetically, if there are were only 100 notes in the United States and there could be no more notes that would ever be made, at that time, in that scenario, there would be a limit as to what 
well, let me let me rewind. How can I, how should I put this? Let's say that there are, the United States started off with 100 of these notes, okay? In circulating supply, total 100 that can ever be printed by the Federal Reserve. That would mean that we the power is limited by the Federal Reserve, right? They can own they print 100 of these and they can go home. Now only $100 bill, I'm sorry, only 100 of these notes are circulating throughout the United States. And that means that they're scarce. In this example, they would be scarce. There are only there are in the United States and there are only 100 of these notes to go around that would make them in theory scarce. But it doesn't end there. What happens is that the Federal Reserve comes in and they'll print up another hundred and then another hundred and then another hundred and then a million, then 10 million. So now your one, your same one dollar note that was in your pocket has lost its scarcity. It has lost its purchasing power because there are more of these notes in circulation. Is, is not as scarce and the more money the more notes that the federal reserve prints the less purchasing power your dollar that's in your pocket has that's in simple terms okay they start out with 100 of these notes going around and then the federal reserve stole your purchasing power from you by printing more of these notes into circulation reducing the purchasing power of your note reducing the scarcity of your note that is the power of the federal reserve most people don't understand this simple logic they think that oh the money is in their hand so they control it no you have the paper true but the federal reserve controls the purchasing power the scarcity or the lack of scarcity of the money that's in your pocket. This is why you see places like Venezuela and other places, Argentina, they get inundated with these notes because their central bank printed so much. But the difference is, the difference in the Federal Reserve notes versus the Argentina notes and the Venezuela notes is that the Federal Reserve notes are global. They're accepted everywhere. Right? So what that does is that just means it's prolonging the time for the inflation to hit. But inflation does hit. These dollars have to go somewhere. The value, the purchasing power is being reduced even if it's being even if these notes are being sent over to brazil even if these notes are being sent over to europe even if these notes are being sent over to japan china wherever they are eventually going to reduce the purchasing power of the notes that you have they're going to come home they're going to end up back here in the United States. And even if they don't end up back in the United States, if you travel outside of the United States with these Federal Reserve notes, your purchasing power is reduced overseas because your, your note is not scarce because the Federal Reserve has been printing and stealing your notes, your purchasing power. That's what, how we are enslaved to the Federal Reserve, and that is how and why we need to abolish the Federal Reserve Act of 1913. I call it the Slavery Act of 1913 because we are enslaved to the eight families of the Federal Reserve. Period. You can't escape it. You can't escape it. Unless we abolish the federal reserve act of 1913 
it's like a house of cards. Everything was built on the Federal Reserve Act of 1913. Once we remove the Federal Reserve Act of 1913, once we abolish that, either either through the county, the state, or the country, that's when we will get true freedom. That's when we will get competition. The Federal Reserve has not done anything positive for the people of the United States except still, still tax. They control the interest rate and they control the power of printing the currency and stealing the purchasing power. Because every time they turn that printer on, they're stealing the purchasing power of the notes that you work for. And people are killing. People are killing for this note that the eight families of the Federal Reserve have infinite amount. This is why there's a big divide between the rich and the poor. There's a hell of a gap between the eight families of the Federal Reserve who have infinite money and the rest of us. We're all poor. We're all poor. Some poorer than others. That's what this middle class bullshit is about. Oh, I'm not as poor as you. Oh, you're poorer than me. Oh, makes you feel good. But you're still fucking poor. We're all poor. We're all poor. If you need this, you're poor. If you can't print this out of thin air like the Federal Res hey, families of the Federal Reserve, you're poor. You have a million dollars, you're poor. Two million dollars, you're poor. Federal Reserve has infinite notes. They can press a keyboard and put a billion dollars of these notes in circulation in a half a second. That's rich. You having to go out and work every day just for them to print more money to steal your wealth, your hard-earned money? That's poor. That's enslavement. That's not... That's You don't have any control. You have no control on how much the Federal Reserve prints. They print however much they want to at their damn will, at their discretion. They steal at their discretion. They steal your purchase and power at their discretion. They're out there living in fucking luxury. Traveling private jets. And don't do any work. They just steal your purchasing power. They print money for themselves. And then we have to wait for it to trickle down to us. Who do you think is buying these Rolls Royces? These new goddamn Rolls Royces. Every goddamn year. Who? Who's getting these motherfucking new Rolls Royces for their goddamn wives every goddamn year? Who's flying these private jets from country to country every goddamn day that stay in the top floors of these hotels? That's who the Federal Reserve is. That's who's rich. 
You don't have a private jet. You're not rich. If you don't have a fleet of Rolls Royces, you're not rich. You up here talking about, oh, I'm middle class. Oh, shut the fuck up. You're broke. You're poor. Never been on a private jet. Never been in a Rolls Royce. Don't own multiple properties. Can't print money out of thin air. You're poor. Piss me off when people think they motherfucking bourgeoisie because they're wearing some fucking belt that costs $2,000. They have a bag that costs $50,000. Bitch, you broke. You poor. Show me your motherfucking fleet of private jets. Show me your fleet of motherfucking Rolls Royce Phantoms 2023s. Show me your multiple apartments throughout the motherfucking world. Show me you printing money out of motherfucking thin air. That's when you motherfucking rich. Unless you can do that, you ain't rich. You poor. Just like the rest of us enslaved motherfuckers. You poor. We're poor. This shit fucking up everything. Fucking up families. See, the way that it used to work and should work and that our founding fathers of the United States wanted it to work was that we had to rely on gold and silver. This is why it's in the Constitution that Congress shall coin Coins out of only gold and silver. This abolishing the Federal Reserve Act and giving power back to silver and gold is the way that we can fix and rid ourselves of the cancerous Federal Reserve, the eight families of the Federal Reserve. You got these fucking people out here, women out here going out Pushing paper, thinking that they doing some shit for this, for these notes that the Federal Reserve prints out of thin air. You can't print silver and gold out of thin air. You got to dig for that shit. You got to dig ditches. You got to go on the ground. Let's see women do that. Let's see you dig some ditches. Get dirty. Break nails. Break sweat. Wear bandanas. Get dirt all under your nails. To get that silver. You don't want to do that, do you? Oh, that's right. You go ahead and stand... Stay at home, baby. Take care of the kids, baby. Let us men go out there and dig and mine for silver and gold, real money. Let's trade goods for silver and gold. This shit got everything all fucked up. People who print money out of thin air out there riding on motherfucking Rolls Royces and private jets for not doing a goddamn piece of work while the people that breaking their backs are the broke people. The Illuminati. The illuminated ones. The enlightened ones. This paper. 
is not backed by anything besides the Federal Reserve Act of 1913, which gave the eight families of the Federal Reserve the power, the monopoly to create the currency of the United States to steal the purchasing power from the citizen of the United States. You have to abolish the Federal Reserve Act of 1913. I know this video started off with Donald Trump to turn for who really controls this country, who really controls you. We have people killing, stealing for these notes. They're, they're, they're spending their lives for these notes only to have the purchasing power stolen from them by the push of a button by the eight families of the Federal Reserve or the Illuminati, however you want to call them. We can end this cancer by abolishing the Federal Reserve Act of 1913. So that's this video. I said 20 minutes. It's now 43 minutes. I want this video to be out, so probably won't have too much editing. It's probably going to be in its rawest form. But that is what it is. I'm out. Blech!